All right, so anyway, guys, so here's basically what we've, and like I said, after, and most of you already know because we've been going through this. But uh, we looked at a bunch of designs today. Um, we weren't really like, nothing jumped out at us where we said, wow, that's a great design, let's try to go with that. Uh, we've actually mostly done a lot of research where everybody's looked at different videos. We saw some videos also of stuff that didn't work. So we know, for example, that the forklift idea, uh, we're pretty much discarding that because that's one that, first of all, you have to get underneath the robot. Which we can't. Which, not that you can't, but it makes, I mean, get underneath the tote. But besides that, it's also not very, it's not very practical. The other thing that we looked that we saw another video before that also had another similar to a forklift, but grab the totes on the side. And those seem to be able to um, do some work, but you have to lift a lot of them at the same time. And because of that, you can t tend to tilt over, the robot can fall over. You've got all the weight to the front. Um, this last video we looked at today, or that we've already been looking at for a couple of days, uh, that somebody else did, and they came up with a design that looks very, very efficient. So what we've decided is we're going to go ahead and go that route, kind of like emulate the design. We're not going to copy it. Here's the thing. We're not going to copy it. We're going to do follow. We're going to copy some of the elements of their design, but we're going to come up with our own and we're going to build it our own way. Okay? So let's, I'm going to go over you what the main points are on that design. Now, one of the things that... Um, let, let me get the design first here. Okay. So first of all, here's what we looked at. Their design basically has a base like this. Okay. Same base that we have. That's the standard base. Now, the thing what it does is it has an arm here. Not an arm, but the structure of it is set up so that there, it articulates here and it comes out this way. So it's some, somewhat like a forklift. Okay. It has piston here that makes this arm go up and down this way, pivot this way, and it grabs the totes by basically the tote will, it has like a little like lip on the tote that it grabs onto and can lift the totes up and down this way. Now, besides that, it has the two arms here with wheels on the end, and the wheels here position when the toad is on the ground, it positions it so that you can grab it with the arm. Okay? Now the good thing about this design, main points that we talked about. First point, this, let's say number one. This is very advantageous because you have a good center of balance here. You're basically the the force is here and it and it tends to try to rotate the robot against the ground, let's say. But you've got enough leverage that you can lift the toes and it's not going to fall over. So this is a very stable design. So this is the first part that we want to go ahead and emulate, which is basically where the structure of it is in the back of the robot, not all the way in the front. If you set it up like this, let's say this was the robot, and you set up the two arms here, okay? When you start lifting totes, the force this way would tend to make the robot fall over, okay? Go like that and fall over and crash. So by doing this, believe it or not, it limits that, okay? So that's the first element. The second element is the pickup, okay? What was easy about that pickup is if you look at the totes, they do have little lips along the side that you can grab onto very easily and pick up the whole tote from one end or from the sides, okay? So that element is the second one that we're going to look at. The third element is this positioning device. Basically what this does, as you guys saw, the two arms, you just basically get, get it up against the tote, and then the arms bring the tote and put it in a position that you can then grab it. Which is perfect because it saves time. When you're working with it, trying to drive it onto the right spot to then grab it takes time. Whereas if you can just kind of position it, then press a button, let it bring it in, then you've already you've saved a bunch of time there. That makes it easy to drive also, okay? In the, so, in the design so far, and what you've explained, Mr. Carballo, the reflective tape and the sensors to catch that on the yellow tote, that doesn't play into any of this no, yet. No, no, we're looking at okay. the basic mechanics of it. Right okay, now. okay. Okay, we're not looking at anything else yet, okay? So this is basically the three things, what I wanted to say is these are the three things that we are going to 
emulate that. We're gonna let's say copy. We're not copy, but we're gonna use that. Okay. okay? Now, yes, we're definitely not complete. Here's part of it. If you look at the video with that robot, it doesn't meet the size constraints the way it is. One of the limits you have 28 by 42 as far as the base, okay, length and width. High to 78 inches, which we won't have a problem with a design like this. It won't be more than 78 inches, so we can we don't have to worry about that. But the limit in size is only when transporting the robot. So the robot can literally be as wide as it can be. It doesn't matter. It can be six feet wide. It could take up the whole field and pick up the whole field at once. The problem is when you transport it, it has to collapse to 28 by 42 base, right? So what do we need to do as far as our design? Number one, our design team now, we will concentrate on separating these different elements and designing them ourselves with the materials that we're going to use. So we have to look at what materials we're going to use, what we're going to use here for a piston, for example, or maybe we change the, 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 the way this is set up a little bit differently. Uh, this end should be fairly easy. We just have to make measurements and see what the best design for the tip is going to be to pick it up. So this should be fairly simple. This mechanism here that positions it, they use a couple of wheels on both sides. We can follow that. But there may be other ways that we can do that a little bit more efficiently, so we can look at that as well. Okay? So the way that I'm plan that I'm thinking that we should do it is within our groups, then now concentrate on just like maybe some somebody can design this part only. Someone else can work on designing just the arms. Mm -hmm. Okay? And an inventor, you're talking about inventor. Yeah, well we're okay. gonna use definitely we have to use inventor. Okay. Okay, so who's the one that's gonna do most of the inventor drawings? Okay, we got one, two, three. Okay, you guys, you guys will start setting up these inventor drawings. The problem with those, remember that we're, it, really to make the, the right inventor drawings, we've got to know what we're going to use as far as materials are concerned. Because we can buy like aluminum pieces that have a certain shape, but there's 20 different shapes that you can buy aluminum stock with. So which one are we going to use for that? Probably very useful. What's that? Which means the CNC machine will probably be very useful. Well, it could be, yes. But what I'm talking about, so... We had one of the elements that we had because um, Stephanie had a little list of things that we had to do. One of them is to, and who, who was that assigned to? To call Simmons Metals. Okay, Simmons Metals basically they have that material in stock. We don't care right now how much, so much the cost. We just want to know what they have available, and yeah, basic cost of it, and we can then decide what we want to go with. But we have to know what is what materials are available, so we can say, oh, we can use this for the arms, or we can use that, or we can use this other one because it slides, etc. And we have a budget; we can't go over the right. budget. But either. the budget is four thousand dollars. In okay. my opinion, it's going to be for making this design. It's going to be very difficult for us to go over four thousand okay. dollars. Okay. Uh, it doesn't. They have the retailers over here. Yeah, exactly. No, this one is a Simmons Metal over on 72nd and 41st yeah. Northwest by the airport. You're right. And the Lexan. Yeah, and the Lexan is over in that area also, yeah. I think, on Okeechobee Road or something. So that's fine. But the point is that we now we now we really have to work hard in designing it, but there's a lot of options on how we're going to design this thing to work. Okay, so don't think because we looked at a design and we said, let's go with these people's design. We're done. Oh, this is so easy. We're just right. going to copy it. No. Now we have to figure out how we're going to put it together, put it together in the right way. So now every detail of it, what you use to articulate here, makes a difference. Everything. What piston you use, what material you use here, okay? What stock you use, what do you use on the end? Definitely, for, in my opinion, we should use mostly aluminum because aluminum is very lightweight and very easy to use, very rigid. And these things, these toasts aren't very heavy. Okay, so I think that would work, so we can limit it that way, that gives us a step ahead. But we have to design all these things. Now, we also need to design beyond that. We're going to look at the size of our robot, and we have to figure out a way to collapse it to the size. Right now, our base is larger than the size that you can transport The allocated it limit, yeah. Okay, so that's something that we have to look at. How do we collapse it? You have a limit of 60 seconds to set up your robot on the field and to take it back out of the field when you start a match and when you finish a match. If you take too long getting out of the field, they give you a yellow card, 
which is like a panel key. Broken down when you move it on and off, or can it be three No, you can take it off, but if it takes that you have to break it down and stuff to move it, and you take too long, you get a yellow card. If you're getting onto the field and you take more than 60 seconds to set it up, whether it's and they're probably because a lot of people set it up at the beginning with autonomous and they put it in a certain location and they want to measure and put it exactly in a certain way, and that's fine. You're allowed to do that. But if it takes you longer than 60 seconds, I mean, they're a little bit flexible. If it takes you 65 seconds, they're not going to say anything. They'll be like, hey, you know, hurry up, but they'll let you go. But if it's taking longer, they call that delay, and they will actually disable the robot for that match if it's taking you too long to start the match. Wow. Okay? So when we design a robot to collapse for, for uh, transport size, we have to take that into account. There's a lot of things that we can do. We can use quick disconnects. We can use like kind of uh, certain types of those big screws that you can put in a certain location, maybe put a pin in, tighten it, and you run the robot like that. When you're done, you unscrew it, take the pin out, collapse it, and close it in a smaller position for transport, okay? So those are all the details that we have to design, that we have to think about in this robot, okay? As a design team, okay? Is that clear, guys? All right, the other thing, there is no stipulation right here for what right now? Air. For what? I said air. Power, motors. No, what have we not even thought about noodles. as far as the match is concerned? The, the, the noodles. The noodles, right? Doing this, this is great for the bins, and this also works for the garbage cans, but we're not, we haven't looked at the noodles yet. Now we have to screw them. Okay, so, but we have a direction that we can start off in. The other part is that we can add to this maybe another mechanism, or maybe we can modify this in such a way that will allow us to also catch the noodles and, and manipulate the noodles as well. So that's something that we additionally have to think about. And we can look at those ideas. What's that? Does it say the noodles have to enter the can in the same state? Yes, you can't cut it up. Yeah, no. yeah, plus, <laughs> it, it would be extremely difficult to cut it up. Right, so exactly. You said cut it up. I would think it's shredded and put a yes. uh, vacuum tube over the uh, can, hold the blow. Okay, one, one person at a time. Christina. Um, yeah, Christina. I found the RI3D. Uh-huh. We also have a video on throwing noodles. Okay, all right. So we can look at that also. But we can start now concentrating more on ideas, maybe just for the noodle themselves. So, now... Now, what do you suggest, like, for these different committees, now that you've presented this, Mr. Carballo, mm -hmm. what, what do you suggest that these different committees okay, do now? exactly. That's exactly what I was going to say next. Okay. First of all, any questions, any comments on what we just, what I just explained to you guys? Everybody's perfectly clear? Everybody's comfortable with this direction. Everybody's comfortable. Does everybody want to go, does everybody agree with going this route, or is there a serious objection or objections of any kind? Everybody's happy with it? We're good? What about 